Hi guys, in the last video we spoke about how to improve, how to go better in the electronics laboratory and we spoke about from a small digital $4 multimeter to get a better one, to get a benchtop multimeter but also we need a voltage reference and today we are going to talk about it we need calibration. We need to know what is our standard. If I tell you I'm here, uh, I know in my mind where I am, but for you to know it, you need a reference. Where are you? And that where from where is it? We need an origin point. And that is what is the reference about. Calibration is when we get perfectly ideally, because there is no perfectly, to the point we want to match. And reference is from certain point to go forward to it, more or less, starting from that point. I will use the ref 102C. And this chip has enough precision, at least for what I need, and it's better than many chips I saw in the market too. The price is very low and I recommend it. In my case, I will need higher voltage, 20. I will need lower voltage, 1. But this will be my reference to inspect my equipment. Just to take in consideration, this is the design I made for what I need. You can do something better, always. Remember, if you have a three digits and a half multimeter, you need to calibrate with something that gives you four digits and a half. If you have four and a half, you need a voltage source with five digits and a half. If you have five digits and a half, you need six digits and a half voltage source and so on. So always the last digit is something we cannot count with because this is the one that is not in the specification and has the tolerance. Okay? Keep that in mind for your future projects and adjustments. Now, let's go to the circuit. I'm going to use a 9 volts battery now, but later I will use just an adapter with 12 volts. I'm using a common voltage regulator, the LM78. L05. This voltage regulator requires a 0.330 microfarads capacitor in the input and 0.01 microfarads capacitor in the output. Anyhow, as tradition, we engineers, we always will add a 0.1 microfarad capacitor in the network from the beginning to the end or in the power input for each chip. My chip requires 11 point something volts, so I'm using a 5 volt voltage regulator in between just to give some kind of st stability and to create more barrier, a firewall between my circuit and the mines. So I have to create a plus minus power supply. I don't want to use a switching power supply. Uh, many reasons for it. One of the most common ones we know is the noise it generates. So in this case I will make it fast and furious. I will give you a deception to all of you who are expecting a switching power supply design. I will cheat and I will use a very old tradition ship and I will get my power supply from it. I'm going to use the MAX 232. For MAX 232, there are many chips in the same data sheet. And something I found in the beginning, and I want to show you, is one of the data sheets has the following reference. Plus and minus can have a maximum magnitude of plus seven volts, but their absolute difference cannot exceed plus 13 volts. It doesn't apply for the RS-232 is for the other model of chip 
if you want to place a lot to reduce that voltage, you will overheat your chip. So keep that in mind. This is the configuration I need. Capacitors are going to be one microfarad. Pay attention to the polarization. The data sheet makes reference to a very good quality capacitors. Nowadays, electrolytic capacitors, they are good enough if they are new models, if they are small and tiny and packy. For our voltage reference, you can use Texas instrument or you can use the Burr Brown. They are in the same specifications. So paying attention here, I'm going to use 10 volts and my 10 volts are going to be shown in my four digits and a half multimeter. That means whatever happens in the last digit is out of specification. There is a tolerance in the equipment, there is noise on the line, and there is not a full calibration or full calibrate reference. So whatever I do with this equipment, I, have, I must have in consideration the last digit is the tolerance. Anyway, if the last digit is 2 in my multimeter or 2.5, in this case my multimeter, will round that number and it will show it as 0 0.003 volts. If I can get less than 2, that means it's great, it's wonderful. So I'm okay with it. Let's see, what are we getting? Now, let's connect this puppy. This is the voltimeter. In the other side, I have the oscilloscope and I have two traces. I will give about 20 minutes for the equipment to heat. I'm going to use a coax cable with VNC connector. The main idea is to get some chill against the noise. Now, what did I do that you wouldn't do? In the specifications from the data sheet, it recommends a very special operational amplifier. Because I'm not working with six digits and a half, I don't have any problems with it. So I went with a very cheap operational amplifier, the TL. 07 and it gives me everything I need it's jumping between 10.001 and 10.002 now I am not in the operational amplifier, I am with the voltage reference. And it's the same result. That's the reason for what I need. It's okay the operational amplifier I'm using. My bulb meter has already one millivolt difference sometimes and it switched between 0 0.000 and 0 0.001. That means my voltage reference is not the one who has the blame for this difference, is the bulb meter. Also, I can make a comparison with my other two voltmeters here. 
I have the radio check and this is what I got with this voltage reference. And also I have the Miyako and this is what I got with this voltage reference. And why not? Let's see what is the $4 voltmeter telling us. All right, if I want to make an adjustment of this equipment, the first thing I have to do is to be in the right temperature and it's not today. Today is too cold, it's about 17 Celsius in this room. So we'll be in spring when I readjust them just to get them closer. But let's remember, if it is already in the specifications, it's right. There is not any need for anything else. Thanks guys by watching the video. I hope you enjoy it and you will create your own voltage reference too. Don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.